in this video I'm gonna teach you how to start an online school which is a few steps above starting an online course now one of the things that throws many people is they're trying to create passive income and they're trying to create it very quickly with little regards if they've got enough juice to make the passive income work. Hey, this is Glendon Cameron, founder of Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills and Dojo. Be sure to go below the video and get the special where you'll get productivity tools, entrepreneur life skill tools, marketing tools, and how to build up business tools. Get both for $299.99. Else again, it's during $99.99. The link is below the video. Now let's top it up on how to start online schools. The best way that I can help you is to take you through the journey that I started in 2010. Now, there are many people who want to just like get to the good stuff. Give me the tactics on you know step A, step B, step C on how to do this. And what you're missing is I'm about to explain to you all of the things not to do which are more important than step A B and C because you can do step A B and C and still not make any money so let's begin 2009 I wrote a book making money A to Z with self storage unit auctions now the thing is with the niche there wasn't a lot of demand which was good but there were many people who did not understand what I was doing. Now, part of that is it was an undefined market. Going back, I would have niched it down and broke that book up into five different subject matters. Because it's really, the book is a business guide. It's more than just how to buy storage unit auctions. But that was one of the things that led me to creating my first online course. People would buy the book and they would struggle. They would need additional help. They would need some additional tools. And part of that struggle came because I didn't understand. And this is something as a online school administrator and educator, you have to understand people don't all learn the same. I'm a person that can read a book and get it and execute. I'm very easily self-taught. It's just a gift of mine. Everyone's not wired like that and that's one of the mistakes that I made as putting together training. Some people need auditory training. Some people need presentations. Some people need slides. You don't know what your market place is going to need because they're going to buy your product and people typically will not talk to you unless they're pissed you can ask them a b and c and they're like uh -huh, uh huh and then when they get to that piss point well you screwed me so that's something that you have to take in consideration now the first step now there are steps that you should do is whenever you write your book or have your course you should locally Go ahead and grab as many people as you can and teach them in person. I know, it's like, wait a minute, Glendon, what does this have to do with teaching people online? I wanna teach people online. Well, I'm gonna give you some valuable information here. You don't know what you're going to encounter when someone comes through your offer and says, hey, I like what you're putting out, here's my money, train me. You don't know what that person's discipline level is. You don't know what that person's ability to learn. You don't know if that person has learning disabilities. You don't know if that person knows how to read well. And you know, for those of you who are small kids, if you can go ahead and teach your kids to read as soon as possible, you're gonna give them an advantage for life. The better your reading comprehension skills are at an early age, the, the better that you will learn everything from first grade kindergarten whatever they're doing up until college or grad school number one biggest indicator of your future educational success is how well you read and comprehend big big stuff and there are many people due to no fault of their own 
who just don't read that well. Uh, Gary V has put it out there that he can't read a book. You know, he's not stupid, but he doesn't learn that way. And there's other people who don't learn that way. There are people who need cooperative education where they need hands-on training plus schoolwork and proctors and uh, mentors and study. There's some people who just need all modalities of learning to get it. And there are some people who need one. Now, one of the things is video and audio cut across a lot of different learning modalities and people receive information and take in information better with audio and video which is one of the reasons 2012 that I went straight audio and video for courses and really left a lot of text out because people are impatient and this is something that's true of me I may need to go over material two three four sometimes ten times to get it and if you got to read a book 10 times, let's be real, you're not going to read that book 10 times. It's just not going to happen. So to make it easier for you to learn, I created these video and audio based courses. And if you're going to be a course creator, I'm just going to save you a lot of time. Put as much video and audio as possible in your courses. Uh, there will be people's like, well, you know, they want more text. They want all this other stuff. That's the look and feel. You want your students to be successful. You want them to have impact and make change. And I'm telling you from, from 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, I've seen it. Uh, the video courses, people engage better. They stay around longer and they complete more of the courses than if it's a heavily text-based course. Uh, essentially, which is what my book, Making Money A to Z with Self Storage Unit Auctions, was. It was a course that was 100% text based. Now, I'm creating a new book, YouTube for Business, and I'm creating a course, but I'm creating them in a certain way. With the, the book would be text, and that's more of a, a vast tactic that I'm doing. But the reality is, I already know that it has to have a heavy video and audio component for people to get it, for people to repeat, re repeat the courses, for people to go over it. Because when you sign up for one of my courses and you get an email and it's gonna tell you, create a study guide, sets time aside, and to go over the courses one to three times. Really, four or five for you to get it. Because each time you go over it, you're gonna hear something different you're going to learn something new and it's going to set you up for a higher level of success. And that's part of it. So that's out of the way. Because before you create your course, you have to understand who your audience is and how do they learn. And it's gonna take a lot of different tactics. Now let's get into how to create an online school. Not how to create an online course. Going back 2010, there's a lot of platforms where you can take your course and you can put it there. And the read is take your course, put it on this platform because the platform has traffic. I have been on many of them. I have not been on all, but 2012, I started saying, I'm gonna do my own thing. And this is why, and this isn't to uh, say anything bad about anyone or any platform, it's just, when you're under someone else's directives, there's a certain set of guidelines because one of the things with the platforms, they must be uniform so all their courses look and feel the same. If you're trying to teach a certain way, that's going to be a problem. It's going to be a huge, huge problem. So start there and get, you know, build your course. But I'm going to tell you, it's going to be very frustrating because you're going to burn a great deal of energy and time trying to please the platform versus making the best course possible. If you want to make a really good course and you understand that, you know, you know, I'm gonna get to the part about traffic in a minute. My word of advice to you is to create your own course and learn how to get traffic. Because all of them have, you know, I'll give you an example. One of them, once again, I'm not saying anybody's name because like I said, they're not doing anything bad. It just, it didn't work for me. You're not going to be able to put in really long coursework because, all right, they're gonna have you do your courses a certain way 
to suit the platform. Once again, this isn't bad. This isn't you know nefarious or anything like that. It's just they want to have that uniform look and feel, which is great for them, and it could be good for you, and it also could suck for you. I didn't like it because I have a certain way of teaching, plus I use profanity in my courses. What you see in the videos is what you get in the course, and if you were to meet me in person, it would be the same shit. For some people, that's a problem. Now, this is another thing, and this is an aside to creating your own economy. When you have the energy, when you have the drive and the enthusiasm to create your own economy, not only are you just creating an economy, but you're creating a lifestyle. And I created my businesses so I can live like I want to live and be who I am and still make money versus um, ingratiating myself into some kind of corporate mold that's just not me. I hate that shit and if you're a person like that, that you know you want to do your own thing, you want to be who you are, you want to be tatted from toe to head and create your own shit, create your own shit. I mean, it's going to be the best thing for you because you won't feel like you're suffocating. So my courses and my whole edict are pretty much how I roll across the board. And from a stress reduction point, it's amazing because you don't have to reset for this situation or that situation. You're just who you are across the board and it's a wonderful thing. Now, with that said, many of the platforms are gonna have a problem if you're that free and liberal. It's gonna be a lot of problems with that. It's gonna be many issues and it's gonna cause some blowback. It's gonna cause some of your courses not to be approved. Someone may complain. So if you're very much about freedom and being who you are, you need your own domain name, you need your own courses under your own school. Best way to do it. I'm just telling you if you, you know, you're trying to do something very different. Now, another thing about doing your online school, and this is something you're not going to hear about in groups because there's a lot of people who are talking about it. Uh, the read is automate as much as possible, right? And to a degree, you could do a great deal of automation. However, remember what I said about learning styles? You're gonna have people who will not know how to log in. And I know it's gonna be like, wait, wait, wait we're, on the, we're on the internet. It's 2016. There are many people who are socially inept and technically inept and don't wanna talk about it. Because uh, one of the reasons and this is kind of involved, but I'm going to wrap it up, that I've hired people and I want to hire another person to essentially address concerns because that's a friction point. If someone pays you $1,000 for a course and they can't log in and they're embarrassed about it, they're getting a refund. Sounds simple. Like I said, you're getting stuff from me. You're not going to get from anyone else because the read is to automate everything and it's very hard to automate processes when you have a wide cross-section of people and expectations. It's very hard. So now this is the good thing and this is once again another tip. If you go ahead and set your online school up and actually have organic, you know, carbon-based life forms to answer the phone, help people and respond quickly, you're gonna make way more money. Way more money because most online school and course creators are not doing that. They're running as far away as possible from that. And in that space is a huge amount of opportunity for you if you wanna do an online school. Next thing is back, back office because there's a lot of information on how to create a product or an MVP minimum variable product get it out there and start making money a ton of stuff out there google it you can find it now let me tell you what's going to happen if that stuff is successful because you don't hear this because it's, it's it's rough when you have a huge influx of people coming in and you make a lot of money really fast you're going to have back office work which is you're going to have people who may have signed up because they were seduced and that's something else i have a very low refund rate and i have a very low chargeback rate. I hadn't had chargeback in like two years. I had a few people try, but because you know I have my assistants keep documentation and they were lying and two got caught lying. 
um, they didn't get the money back and my case was approved. So, that, and I'll talk about that too. When you are doing complicated offerings, you need an onboarding process. Whenever I sign up for a platform that's complicated, there's a lot of moving parts, they have some that's where someone will get on the phone with me and say, hey, this is what this was, this, this is how this works, uh, use this, use, and it's, sometimes it's just 10 minutes, sometimes it's 30 minutes, uh, a few times it's an hour, and it's incredibly and insanely helpful. If you have a complicated process, and I'm saying don't dumb down your course, uh, what I'm gonna say is up your service, you can make more money by putting these customer service people in place. I know when I, a few months ago when I put out the first ad, someone, a member of a major group, actually copied me because it's a good idea, and they let me know that he was going through a lot of the same process, problems I was. Number one email we get is people can't log in. They'll sign up and some will go to a spam folder and it's like, hey, I paid for this information, I can't get in. Uh, this happened recently. Someone who bought a course came on the Facebook page. Now this is the thing, it's a funny story. And it was just like, hey, you know, I've been trying to get access to this course and you know, I'm about to do a chargeback. Put this on my personal page. Pretty much pissing on the page. Now see, I've been doing this long enough that that's happened before and I know how to handle it. I didn't get mad, I just went to email and just put his email, the one that he put in there, everything else that he had been mailed through four, five, and six weeks earlier, and for some reason, he did not open up the emails that came, you know, that came to him and they didn't come back, which means they went to the right email address. So, document, 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 document. Because the first thing that many people will do if they're dissatisfied is, this is a scam, you know? That's the first thing because it's easy versus saying, I fucked up. And that's just how people are. Because when uh, he came on the page and he put it on there, and I started calling him out and started tagging his ass, and he didn't have nothing to say. And it's just like, I don't know why I didn't get, that was it. He was embarrassed, and I'm saying, do that because you're gonna have people who are not gonna do what they should do on their side, and they're gonna blame you for their lack of success when they're technologically uh, inept. Uh, there are many people who wanna make money online and don't know how to use email. There are many people who wanna make money online, don't know about apps. There are many people who wanna make money online and have a six, seven, eight, nine year, 10 year old phone. It's just like, it doesn't make sense if you're gonna be a digital citizen, which is a person who makes money online, that you're not with the best equipment and stuff you can get your hands on. And really, let's to be real. If you spent five grand, and that's between, and I'm gonna recommend, if you're gonna become a course creator, get a desktop. You can do this on your laptop and you're gonna fuck up your shoulders because you're gonna be like this all the time and you're gonna get back and neck problems. Ask me how I know. So get yourself a good desktop and a laptop and a tablet and a nice smartphone and a nice camera and all this other stuff because I, I, I'm amazed at how many people wanna make $100,000 a year but don't wanna spend $1,000 on, on equipment. It is it crazy because let's just say you went insane and spent 15 grand on equipment and made 250,000 that year. It's worth it. You'll spend that on a semester of college that doesn't get you anywhere. If you drop out of school, shit, if you finish school, it still may not get you anywhere. So, you know, you got to look at the equipment, the tools as the infrastructure and the elements of your business. I mean, essentially stop being so fucking cheap. And look at that because I once again I'm just giving you the stuff don't do you know my experience that if you put this stuff together and you can get really far without spending a lot of money uh, my first two years I invested $285 in this YouTube channel my hosting and most of that went toward hosting because hosting back in 2009 was a grip and I didn't reinvest I wish I did because I was making a lot of money 
and I would have elevated my brand and moved things much farther along. I actually cost myself money. So this isn't advice saying, hey, go out and go broke buying equipment. This is go out and get equipment that will enhance your brand, make you more money in the long run, and make you money faster. That's the information that I'm giving you because there's a big, big, big conversation about spending money on uh, proper equipment and services while trying to make all of this money and wondering why it doesn't work out. Now, another thing about creating your online school, you gotta brand yourself. I went through a experimental phase because I do a lot of experiments. My professional background, I used to work in a lab, so I approach everything from that kind of research and analysis. And a lot of people are just like, hey, it doesn't look like what you're doing, man. Now understand, none of these people have a YouTube channel or creating any online courses that ain't so shit online. So when you're putting together your courses and your testing, and I strongly urge you to test frequently, do a lot of testing, put stuff out there, you will have people judging you who are not doing what you're doing. I mean, essentially, those who have no skin in the game really don't matter because, once again, their perspective is skewed because it's coming from a place that's not rooted in truth, experience, or honesty. So be ready for that. Just be ready for that. But build your school with a singular purpose. If you have an idea for a lot of courses like I do, done a lot of things, had a lot of business, pick one course, and you know, I've had periods where I did that, pick one course and hammer it for months hammer it for months and then use your other courses as upsells because what's going to happen is people are going to want the best thing and it may not necessarily be about money it's just like well i don't want to miss out people have a scientifically proven fear of acting more so in avoiding loss than reaching out for gain look google it so if you go ahead and put this stuff out there and people are just like, oh shit, I don't wanna miss anything. I don't wanna miss anything. That's gonna create friction and they're not gonna buy. So that that's just some other stuff. And creating an online school will probably be one of the best things that you can do for yourself and your family because we are in the beginning. I mean, you know, people are going, there's all these platforms, there are people doing online courses. We, we're not even, we're not even, we're still, we're not even the tip of the iceberg. We're like the point of the iceberg because what's going to happen is, and in the future, you're going to be able to set up your own online portal. You're going to be able to do teaching, training, super easy. You're going to have your app and it's not going to cost you two, three, four, five, or 15 grand that you're going to be able to create these customizable experiences. So by getting in the game now and creating your online school first, versus just a course and really starting to treat it like real learning. Uh, the new person that's coming on for my company is going to call people up and like, hey, how you doing? Do you have any issues with law? Little stuff that, you know, if you don't have any online courses and you're listening to people who haven't gone that far, you're going to be leaving money on the table. You're going to be leaving a lot of money on the table because it's going to take a while for this to filter down because the cost structure. And there are many people who don't understand how they should set their business up. So you got two, three, maybe five years before this fully filters down because when you put your course together, that's one skill set. When you market your course, and once again, I'm talking about traffic and demand, you, that's another skill set managing your staff that's another skill so each level or layer of difficulty is going to knock more people out of the ballpark and the thing is with traffic you know video marketing is inbound marketing essentially you make the customer come to you let me say that again because everyone's like poo pooing and i get all this stuff about youtube youtube is essentially inbound marketing if done correctly where you just saying, hey customer, come here. They're coming to you. You're not going to them. You're not doing cold calling. They're coming to you. I can't 
I mean, when I worked at Rental Credit, I used to make 250 cold calls per day. Well, that's why whenever I see someone online talking about calling business owners, it, it's super easy. I just start laughing. Understand, people can ink you all kind of ways today that they couldn't do back then. Back then. There are so many ways that they can avoid you, your pitch, and your call. It's insane. So you're better off by creating inbound, uh, inbound marketing campaign so when they want whatever you're selling, you're very easy to find. That's the way that I get traffic. Because, you know, people look at it as YouTube. Let me just give you some marketing terms. Inbound marketing, content marketing strategy. People find me. That's what you want. And part of that is building your school, doing your research, and putting together a comprehensive program. And it's gonna take time, and this is another thing. You're looking at a year. I know I'm talking about a long time, but I'm here to help you. I'm your friend on the internet. I'm your dude. And the truth of the matter is if you spend a year which means more likely you gotta keep your job, you're not gonna leave your job no time soon, and put together a real good online educational system, you can make six figures to seven figures to eight figures for a long time. That's how important it is. And that's one of the reasons that I went through all of these gyrations because I built something that didn't exist. And I approached education training from a posture of bl blunt truth because see this is the thing and some people are like oh you cuss too much and you say this thing the marketplace will the marketplace is a shark and you are a bleeding fish that's the marketplace just yeah picture that the marketplace is a shark and you're a bleeding fish and it will eat you alive unless you swim fast that's it. So all of this stuff about, you know, you shouldn't say this. I'm like, anytime someone comes to me like that, because I've been in business meetings with, you know, executives, uh, older people. And like I said, I am myself. I don't tone this down. And nobody flinched. If you're in a room full of hardcore business people who've been in the game, who've been through a lot of shit, who've had all kinds of issues, a little cussing, mm -mm, it's not going to mess with them at all. And typically, a hard delivery fucks with people who are not accustomed to the harshness of the marketplace. The marketplace is going to beat the fuck out of you if you don't get your game up. That's it. I mean, the marketplace is it's a scary boogeyman if you don't have the skills. And... That's what's gonna happen when you create your online school because you put yourself out there, you put your offering out there, you're going to be judged. You're gonna be judged and you're going to have a lot of critics. You're gonna have a lot of people doing what I call, I didn't take the course, but let me review this. That's gonna happen a lot because they want to, to parse their opinion as a review. A review is you actually took the course, you read the book, and you left a review. They're not doing that. And the internet's a, it's a very funny place in that regard. But if you want to build a legacy, really, really study your audience who you want to sell to. Know them inside and out. Because, like, you know, going back with my business and the things I was doing, I don't do resell stuff anymore and I got a lot of resale videos up and there's so many people that's exactly what they want they want to flip some they're not looking to spend six weeks eight weeks or a year learning something which is their right it's their prerogative but for me and you know, going back because this is the United States of America and you can create that beautiful lifestyle that you want I want a different kind of thing now resale was great to me made a lot of money had a lot of fun learned so much but I'm not in that space now I don't want to be in that space and I'll even tell you something I'm getting ready to move um, I know I already I moved less than a year ago I'm moving again and it's a good thing trust me it's a good thing 
and I was selling stuff and I realized, you know, because I, I was like, I had a garage sale, right? And I was like, I used to do this every weekend. And now, I don't want to do it. You see, I'll be real with you. I don't want to do it. Uh, you know, people coming in, folks haggling. And really, I sold a lot of the better stuff on nextdoor.com. If you got one of those next door communities, it's great for selling stuff. Because uh, Craigslist was an absolute miss. Offer up was booty, and part of it was my merchandise. So I will, you know, break on that. But I don't want to do that anymore. And you know, for eight years I've been doing intellectual property, and that's a big, big thing about creating your online school. Let's say that you have a certain way of doing whatever you do, a certain process, a different twist on it. You can make money from your intellectual property. You really can. Now, you know, for some of those you out there who may have a skill set where there's a lot of information online that's for free okay let me tell you about the two components of free and why I'm no longer doing any more free stuff when you do stuff for free from your posture your stuff can be amazing but the person who signs up for it has no investment ie no skin in the game and your courses can be amazing and more than likely they will click on it it's free, no cost, no 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 urgency, and more likely they're not even gonna do anything with it. They're just gonna, all right, thanks for the freebie and that's it. You don't want that because you're not gonna get referrals, you're not gonna get testimonials, you're gonna have a bunch of people who are actually costing you money because if you have a site like I do, it costs me money every month to maintain and I'm just in the like, this ain't working. I got six months of data, I'm done. Now the other side is, there's a bunch of people out there giving away free content also with no skin in the game. If it doesn't work, hey, it's free, man. What the fuck do you expect? So it's, it, let's say it works. It may not be organized. It may not be sequenced in a proper sequence because people may be really good at what they do. They may be great and they can be horrible trainers because it's an art and a skill to training people. So that's another reason for you to, if you want to do it, start now and get your weight up, get your experience, get your reps in, because the more that you train, the more you will be able to train and you'll get your flow and you'll get your, your rhythm and you, you'll be a better resource to your clients. So that's another reason to really, really think about this and set it up because I'm telling you, the space for this is going to be wide open. And I know you're like, there's all these free courses online. And they follow a typical format. Uh, there's little regard to how people learn. That's a, that's a problem with our public education. You'll have 40 kids in the classroom and like 15 of them need to learn a certain way. And they're not getting that. And they're like smart kids, but they're flunking and failing because they're not being taught a mo in a modality that is effective for them. By you creating courses and putting that modality together, you can make a lot of money and really help a lot of people. So that, that's what I'm saying. You know, just because there's a lot of people doing it doesn't mean the opportunity's there because, once again, I learned with my first book, How People Learn. Then I started doing the audio and video. Then I learned something else. Then there's just a certain way that I look at teaching people now and really down and dirty, like this is it, this is how you do it, let's go ahead and break it, do it now, let me look at it, and that feedback loop, just very, very effective. So this is just one of the things, and I'm probably gonna make this into a two-parter, or a three-parter, or something like that, because there's a lot of information, and I just kinda like threw this out, because it's coming. You could create your own school, get it together, and then bring other people on. Now, I will say, what I'm doing is going to be more boutique type stuff because there is a ton of people who are looking for a proctor, a trainer, a consultant that will give them a more personalized approach to help them do whatever they're doing. Wide open, wide open, wide open. So that's pretty much it for this. You know, I think you got a lot of information. Just watch the video a few times and you should be hooked up. And if you need more, because I'm gonna go real heavy in this, 
be sure to get YouTube for Business. That is the beginning because if you want to make money online, you need two things. Everyone, Facebook, Google, everyone needs two things. Attention and traffic. Attention like, hey, this is cool, let me check it out. And the traffic that comes from them checking it out. Everyone's got to have that. And YouTube for Business is how to get traffic. How to create inbound marketing. That's what the course does. I just didn't title it like that. And I think some people don't understand where we're going. Because if you're going to sell something online, you need traffic. You got to have it. You're going to build it organically. You're going to pay for it with paid ads. Or you're going to have an influencer say, hey, go look at this over here. But you got to have it. And that's what YouTube for Business is about. So you can get the course or you can get the book. The book is $100 and it's in beta mode, which means I'm still building it out. But you buy the book, you got enough to get you started and some more stuff is going to be coming very soon. And you can, or you can get into the course, which is $500 for now. Because learning how to do video marketing properly is a skill set that can make you six to seven figures. And there's not a lot of people who can do it. And this is the reason that a lot of these successful YouTubers um, are gonna get killer jobs. And when I say killer jobs, it's gonna be like 500,000 and 10 million in stock options. I'm serious. Because there's just not many people with years and years of video marketing experience. It's wide open. It is wide open. So if you wanted to get the skills and get a job while you figure out what the hell you want to do, it's a viable option because I'm telling you, I went ahead and I evaluated myself because you know I make this little running joke. I don't know what kind of job I would get, right? I haven't had a job since 2000, and you know the probably the biggest passion of my life was storage auctions, which was a decade. Now video marketing is I'm eight years in. So this probably will be the longest career path I've ever had, career, job, occupation, whatever. And it's really interesting when I talk to people about stuff because I went ahead and audit myself and my current skill set, if I had to get a job, if I had to get a job with my Google Analytics experience, that's 80 Gs by itself. With my Google Analytics experience, video marketing, advertising experience, and creation of video, um, three hundred thousand to maybe six hundred grand. If I had to get a job, that's what the skill sets that I've developed in these eight years of quote playing around on YouTube. And you can start developing those skill sets because video is yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and it's going to get hotter and hotter and hotter. So if you want to be part of that new economy, go below, get YouTube for Business, either get the book or sign up for the course. All right, this is Glendon. I'll see you in the next episode.